If you have solar and battery storage or just solar, then there's a good chance that your system was installed correctly based on a new audit. It's absolutely worth having a look into this because you could be losing a lot of the energy based on incorrect installation. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Solar energy this year has been blowing my mind. The output is insane. A ramp up of solar and wind and battery storage worldwide is just going crazy. What a time to be alive. It's absolutely incredible. All of this will combine to one day provide virtually free energy. Eventually. At least that's what Tony Sieber said, and I agree with him. He said that back in 2014. He has a phrase for it. He calls it marginal cost of energy, as in very, very small cost. Now, even if you don't live in Australia, this could still apply to you. However, the Australian energy market operator is calling for urgent action on installer standards after a checkup on industry compliance with changed inverter standards found less than one third of inverters in new solar battery and EV charging systems had been correctly installed, less than one third. It was close to 25%, meaning there's a, like a more than a 70% chance that if you have solar and a battery installed, it's been installed incorrectly, the inverter. And that's a pretty significant problem. AEMO commissioned a random order of inverters installed over the past 12 months, and it found that only 28% of systems with visible settings were confirmed to have the correct settings according to new rules that came into play in December of 2021. Basically, a lot of people installing stuff, they're new to the industry. Uh, this is new technology. They don't fully understand it. They just went whatever and just stuck it there and they move on to the next job. Unfortunately, this has happened a lot. Australia, Australia has a huge uptake of solar. In fact, we have more solar on residential roofs than any other country in the world per capita. And a lot of people are opting to get a Tesla battery pack installed as well, or another battery pack from other installers. A lot of people get LG Chem batteries or LG Energy Solutions, although there was a recall for those batteries. 14,000 batteries were recalled because of problems with fires and there was some houses that burnt down as a result. Now, more than half or 55% of the inverters tested displayed settings that were incorrect, while the remaining 17% of inverters checked were partially correct or had some settings that weren't right. For around half the inverters randomly tested, the auditor was unable to confirm what settings were even applied. So if you don't know what settings are applied, there's no way of knowing if it's actually correct, obviously. AEMO's findings on inverter compliance followed changes to rules governing technical settings for new inverters that were published by the Australian Energy Market Commission in December of 2020 and became mandatory for all new installations 12 months later. The idea was to get them to be set so they would actually work properly, so you wouldn't be wasting energy. The rule change was requested by AEMO in a bid to gain greater control and visibility over distributed energy resources, first and foremost rooftop solar, which by 2020 was rapidly contributing more than 50% of instantaneous demand across the grid and much more in South Australia. As Renew Economy has reported, the Australian and New Zealand Standard Grid Connection of Energy Systems via Inverters Part 2 Inverter Requirements Update differs from the rules rushed through in South Australia in 2020, in that it does not require solar households to nominate an agent to switch off their solar if asked to by the market operator. So the reason they have that rule in South Australia is because there's too much solar sometimes. Sometimes the solar panels on people's roofs in South Australia actually send too much power into the grid. Now, the opposite used to be the problem. There used to be problems where there wasn't enough solar energy on hot days. Now there's more than enough, which is amazing. Now, it's actually on AEMO's wish list, according to onestepoffthegrid.com.au, for NEM wide inverter standards as it braces for distributed energy resources like rooftop solar to at least double in capacity. But in 2020, the AEMO decided to bed down some basic inverter standards, basically to make sure everything was running smoothly. Therefore, these standards make it mandatory for all new inverters connecting to the grid to have an under voltage disturbance ride through capability to ensure household energy systems don't trip 
or disconnect when there are voltage disturbances on the network. Essentially, the mandated operational settings give, give behind the meter resources ranging from rooftop solar to electric vehicles the ability to respond to conditions on the grid that might otherwise cause blackouts in your house, power instability, or PV systems to trip and shut down. So if your system is tripping and shutting down at all, there's a good reason why. It's a good chance that the in inverter settings are incorrect and that's causing a disconnect with the grid. While the AEMO audit confirms that all new inverters tested in the audit process are technically capable of meeting the standards required, a worryingly small percentage of new inverters installed since December of 2021 have been configured according to the mandated settings. This job falls to the installers. And you would think, as the person paying the installer to come in and put it in, that they would do the job correctly, but they're not. When configured properly to the 2020 standard, most inverters appear to be designed appropriately to deliver the disturbance ride-through behaviors necessary to support power system security, said the AEMO. In the field, compliance with technical settings is poor. A wide range of data sources consistently indicate that less than half of systems installed are set correctly to the required standard. One step off the grid.com.au says that the AEMO says the poor compliance with the nearly 18 months old rules points to deficiencies in governance frameworks for monitoring and enforcing the implementation of the mandated technical settings. And it says it's really important for installers to start towing the line on inverter standards and fast. The reason for this is because this is increasing the threat from distributed energy resources to the stability of the grid, and therefore increases the likelihood that other protective measures, such as rooftop solar curtailment, will be put in place. Basically, it's better to comply with the rules rather than actually have rooftop solar curtailment, because curtailment means that you have to basically turn off your panels. To remedy this, the AEMO or is calling on industry and regulatory groups to work together to achieve upwards of 90% compliance on inverter standards by the end of this year. Will that happen? I've got no idea. There might be a reason suppliers are doing this. The reason could be something to do with them trying to get you more power sent to the grid or some other feature like that. I'm not really sure, but there may be a reason they're doing this. And maybe you know what that is. If you do, let me know in the comments. Now, at this time, it is clear that whilst the impacts of non-compliance are complex and multifaceted, this issue is causing serious power system security challenges, said the report. Now, just because the auditor couldn't find the settings doesn't mean it was installed correctly. It doesn't mean the inverter settings are incorrect. However, obviously, a big percentage of the settings on those inverters were incorrect. Ultimately, what we need is a virtual power plant, like what Tesla has. This would actually solve the problem. Tesla's power, power walls and being able to use them as a virtual power plant enables Tesla's software to actually mitigate problems in the grid. It's massive. It works really, really well. The government of South Australia and Adelaide have said it works really well. Other governments have said it works well. In California, it works well. It's being used now in some other states around the world. And I believe this would solve some of these issues. The other option here, though, is that what governments could do is ensure that the inverter settings are preset to the Australian standards before being installed, then there wouldn't be these issues in the first place. Now, either way, it may be worth getting your inverter checked to make sure it's running correctly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.